Hey everybody, we got a new true crime comedy podcast for you to listen to. Yeah, there's a lot of them, but you know what? We're a little bit different. We're called Crimes, Killers, Cults, and Beer. I'm Bill, and my co-host is Todd. And we're two crazy Florida men. And we're just sitting here drinking beer, talking about true crime cases and everything. And you know what? The fact that it's two Florida guys, that makes it even more entertaining. You gotta admit that. But you know what? We're also detailed. We're well researched. We have fun when we're doing it. So check us out. I guarantee you that you'll love it or your money back until we start up a Patreon page. But anyway, check us out. We appreciate it. You won't be disappointed. Crimes, Killers, Cult, and Beer on all platforms. This episode originally aired on March 25th, 2022. Our client today was Sarah Dingus from the Unethical Podcast. Go check that out. I'm not flying. I'm just, I'm driving. I got to go down to Virginia. What's in for, oh, Virginia. Isn't that quite the, the coincidence? Why is this case about Virginia? It's definitely about Virginia. So, so where is Abigail? Abigail uh, is actually. What did, do we say? We fire. Can we tell people? Is that something you tell people? We fire them, or do you like? She doesn't work <laughs> with us anymore. Usually, you you say that they they don't work with you, or we had to let them go. Yeah. You don't yeah. just be like, "Oh, we fired that fuckhead." Yeah. Like, yeah. We ended her. Fucking no. let her go. I Bye, like. I like when people say no longer with the company, but then also abridge that to no longer with us. <laughs> I've heard so many of my coworkers say that about people who have quit. And so they're just killing off my old coworkers on the phone. <laughs> no longer with <laughs> us. Yeah, Jer- Jerry is no longer with us. And then <laughs> just a credit card rep is just supposed to be like, sit with that, that <laughs> oh my God. Jerry's potentially dead. So what we're trying to tell you is uh, she's not with the company anymore. And <laughs> yeah, she's, she's no not with, with us. us. She's no longer with us. Oh, man. She told me that this place solved crimes. Is that you guys? Are you private dicks? You, you guys crimes. solve crimes? Yeah. Yeah. Crimes, mysteries, whodunits. Huh. Well... <laughs> Well, I got a thing that I just I just cannot seem to wrap my head around. I can't figure it out. I okay. and have you heard of this lost colony called Roanoke? You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Of course. Yeah, of course. That's what I'm trying to figure out. That's what I that's what I need to every nail American down. kid, every single American kid learns this in grade school. Every one of them. And if they didn't, they're homeschooled. Yep. That's what I heard. If you don't learn about Roanoke, it's because you were you were schooled in your living room at home by your mom. Yeah, makes sense. So we all we know we'll we'll saw we'll tell you where everything ended up. All right, cool, cool, cool. I'm with it. For the record, I'm not homeschooled. I just in case do this <laughs> later. But of the three of us, if if you had to guess, gun to your head, no who's fucking way. It would be Richard. He barely even has internet. <laughs> no, Ri- Richard looks like he was very disadvantaged in his youth. Is he there- looks like he was thrown to the wind. <laughs> Like there were several teachers who were like, do I try with this one? I'm having a really rough day. My hair is a fucking mess. I don't always look like a piece of shit. Just generally today. Yeah. Well, that's just because today wasn't picture day where you and your brother and sister <laughs> line up <laughs> in the kitchen. And Well, I have to say RJ looks nerdier than I thought. So if I had to like guess yeah, just on you. faces, I'd say RJ looks like he was homeschooled. All right, oh, well, there you it. go. All right. <laughs> This you don't think this face experienced bullying? Come on, I mean, I, oh I guess no, it's you still definitely home, experienced but... bullying, yeah. but it didn't have to be at school. It could have been anywhere. <laughs> my mom fucking slapping my lunch out of my hand every day after making it for me. <laughs> what do you got in that thing? You just made it. Yeah, toughen up, boy. Slap. Give me your lunch Give money your back. <laughs> An elite team of private detectives. What if balloons are aliens? Like maybe that's the key component we're missing. Cover ups. John's guilty. Mysteries that need to be solved. Maybe Mormons need mountains. 
Richard, shut up. Okay, so Dingus wants us to solve this fucking case, huh? Well, we could do it. You're talking about Virginia. This is we're doing the Lost Colony of Roanoke. Oh yeah. Lost Colony of Roanoke. I don't think I know what that is. I taught it in history class. You don't know you don't know me. You don't know my history class. That was gonna be my first question right off the bat. You guys learn about this in school, yeah? You do RJ, yeah? Yep. Rick, not so much. I've never heard of this. No, I might have never. I mean they might have tried to teach it, but I mean the school I went to that wasn't in my home taught me about it. So Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> is rick giving you off like homeschool vibes, homeschool vibes v- vaguely i get i get I, mean, I was not vibes. homeschooled i was not homeschooled we we did it out in the shed we didn't do it in the house <laughs> were you like one of those like cult kids no what why would you think that what i'm asking a question if you were you got very defensive over that so that i screamed, went to- <laughs> yes I'm just wondering why you jumped straight to that. I went to a very small public school. Okay. Yeah, in his living room. <laughs> Anybody else was welcome. We left the blinds up. open. Anybody could look in. It was public. Okay, let's 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 quiz you a little bit more. I don't know anything about American history. I learned all this just brand new for myself because uh, I heard one thing one time, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to learn the whole thing, and I did for fun. Uh, so I, this is American history. I would assume you might know, RJ might know, what's the first successful English colony in America? Do you know what that was? The Jamestown? That's correct. Rick didn't get that one. I would have never, I, w- I don't remember these things. I will never. Okay, that's fine. I've just seen where the school system's at. Well, Mr. Carr was pretty good. Rick's mom was lacking, obviously, so. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that was the first one. That was in 1607. But there was a another attempted colony 20 years before that that was lost to history. And that's what I, I heard about. And I was like, let's let's read about this. So on May 8th, 1587, three ships set sail from England to America to start this new colony. Now, I was very ha- I started with ships right away. And I was thinking about fucking the Mary Celeste. And I was like, there better not be any time, distance, measurement, knots. <laughs> because I fucking hate that. And there was none. So that, that's fun. Uh, I didn't have to deal with knots. But anyway, so the three ships, load up three ships. Uh, most of these people were middle class London people trying to make it in the new world. Because the way it was over there was like, if you had a, a fancy name or a title, you would get all the stuff. And then you would just be, you know what I mean? England was full. Let's get some people out of there. So. I don't know if I would have done that. Would you jump on a fucking ship? Now, let's say Elon Musk is like, I'm bringing middle class families to, to Mars. We're going to go uh, colonize. Let's go. Yeah, no, because it was different then. Because like, I feel like life as like living in like London in the fucking 1500s was virtually identical to living in a newfound land. Like you do the same thing. Like it's not like you go to Mars and you're like, wow, I don't have a cell phone or a washing machine anymore. They never fucking had that anyways. They're just like, wow, this is a different creek from what I wash my clothes in back there. Like That's true. But I feel like, I don't think they're, if you drop off on Mars, they're going to be like, okay, bye. Don't use the washing machine in the spaceship. You know what I mean? Like you'll still have that stuff. I mean, like, but like, I don't know, just certain creature comforts. Like, cause like how long would it take for like, I don't know, like, new episodes of a show to get to fucking mars you know what i mean like you're cutting yourself off there was you're just you're comparing like the things you like but like they had stuff that they were missing out on when they went over there they get like hot baked potatoes you know what i mean sure get I, whatever I, shit you buy off the street like they still lost creature comforts just I different guess, ones but like half the things that any that you could buy then that are like that is just shit that would just you would have to make yourself anyways like Like, it's not the same thing as, like, McDonald's or making a hamburger at home. It was either you'd make the thing at home or you paid someone else just for the convenience of not making it. I feel like the quality was going to be absolutely the same. Like, everything was just – there's no machines or or anything. You know what I mean? I guess so. It's like, I don't know. Come on, guys. We're not going to have sex with girls for a long time. Like, there's a lot of things uh, (laughs) – That would be missing you know. going out there too. You know what I mean? I don't. I don't think so because there was there was a uh, there were there were native women and a lack of of care for consent. Oh, yeah, so. that's true. That's mm. true too. All right. Anyways, yeah, there was 115 of them. 
All right. Actually, it was about 120 that went there, but we'll get into it later. 115 were the ones that actually disappeared. The colonization effort was sponsored by a guy named Sir Walter Raleigh. Raleigh is known in history as an explorer, politician, poet, uh, map maker, ship captain. He's got like 50 different fucking titles. Wow. You know what I mean? Like, you know, Jesus, man. Impressive people. That's all. Like, I feel like there's a lot of guys like that, though, back then. Raleigh was born in 1552 or 1554. They never say 1553 ever. They say either 1552 or 1554. I don't know why three is out of the question, but it was out of the question. So it's one of those two years. He got in the good books with Queen Elizabeth I when he was vice admiral in the late 1570s. Uh, So from 1579 to 1583, he took part in a quelling of an Irish uprising. He was like in his late twenties, early thirties doing this. And he like was ruthless. Uh, the queen really liked the fact that rally and his half brother, Humphrey Gilbert were uh, that ruthless to the Irish. There's stories of these guys having so little Ruth that they would kill civilians, civilian, little Irish dudes, uh, chop their heads off and set off, set up corridors of severed heads at the entrances to all their camps. So wow. these guys are really cool. Yeah, yeah. I think the wicked. most interesting part of that is I've never heard the term ruthless be said. It's so little Ruth. <laughs> yep, I was thinking the same they, thing. They barely had any fucking Ruth at all. It's almost it's no as if Ruth they were without Ruth entirely. <laughs> I actually googled. I actually googled the definition to make sure that that was a word and that I was hearing that correctly. And how was it? How was my you, it, You're spot on. Yeah. So little Ruth. They got no Ruth yeah. as fucks. Uh, yeah, but crazy, though. They'd be chopping people's heads. So 59s were a different time, you know? That was that impressed a queen. That would horrify the queen now. Imagine you just set up a quarter of severed heads for Queen Elizabeth now. She'd fucking lose it. She'd cry. What if she didn't? What if she just, like, <laughs> clapped and, and giggled? Yeah, she's like, oh, you're taking fucking out the Irish again. <laughs> Bucktooth inbred moron. <laughs> Yay, violence! <laughs> in my honor <laughs> so for their quelling of the irish rebels rally was given forty thousand acres in ireland so that's where he spent most of his life was the baron or whatever of ireland he's he stayed there for a long time i think he was a mayor or some shit while he's there uh it's not really about him the story just trying to give you the background of the guy that's paying for this more interesting and valuable in my opinion is that in 1884 queen elizabeth also gave rally permission to colonize america what she's actually told him was that he could rule quote uh any remote heathens and barbarous lands countries and territories not actually possessed of any christian prince or inhabited by christian people end quote so permission only counts if you're like a white person you know what i mean you go, you, if there's no white people out there already, just take it. Cheers. I mean, honestly, it's fucked up, but could you imagine being the first one here and it's just the dib system? Yeah, I know. It's crazy. That's what it is. You just roll it and you're like, I'll take that area. Dibs. Yeah, and, yeah, this is what the queen actually told him. This is the only stipulation. Well, there's a couple stipulations. He had to colonize by in seven years. So by 1891, or he loses claims. Or uh, when he does colonize, he owes the crown one fifth of any profit. So he still has got four fifths left of profit and dips, you know, it's not bad. It's not bad. You tax Uh, everyone and you only give the the crown one fifth of your profits. What the fuck? Yeah. Anything. And you lie about what your profits are natural resources, anything like that. Right. It's, it's all, it's an open world out there. Sassafras was a big thing. No wonder, no wonder fracking got so big. This motherfucker. Yeah. So the queen really, what her idea was for the whole thing is that uh, Spanish were already out there. And so were the French uh, colonizing North America. So she wanted to set up a privateering base somewhere kind of hidden and colonize at the same time. So that not only would they get a foothold in America and get some of their land, like get some land for themselves, but also to fucking rob all the super rich Spanish ships that were coming from South America. They were just robbing the Aztec blind and heading back to Spain all the time. So she knew this was happening. And she's just like, you know what? We could just steal from them. Like, I love privateering. It's hilarious. It's just like piracy for a cause. It's the same cause. Just be wealthier. 
Yeah, for sure. But I mean, you have to give it up. That's why pirates you get. It's like being a pirate, but with like, like a big brother to be like, Hey, fuck off. Leave <laughs> them alone. You know, we, we said this was okay. Yeah, exactly. So you, we changed the name to privateering. It's not pirating yeah. anymore. <laughs> yeah. So rally seized on this opportunity right away. Like I get to perfect. She's going to give me a fucking ships and everything. I'm going on an expedition right away, but she didn't want him to go. She's like, no, you stay here. My little butt boy, you send people, send people. Um, I'm not really sure. I see some stuff for okay, Cause the queen Elizabeth was like known as the virgin queen. Cause she never got married or whatever. And she was just, but I, there's things, there's lots of implications on the internet that rally was fucking the queen. Okay. I don't know if that's true or not, uh, but she made him stay. And so he had to send some people out now. Well, that that's actually how you, you would be knighted back then. Um, the, the thing is, is that nobody, uh, you know, h- hygiene was very, a very low importance and understanding back then. So anybody yeah. who was willing to go down on the queen, uh, <laughs> become a knight. And, yeah. and Will was like, I'm in, I'll do it. I, uh, I'll get close to her I'm by in. chopping all these Irish heads and then I'll, I'll eat her muff. <laughs> it seems uh, if, if only it was that easy nowadays, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that's, I think that is still how it works, right? Like, eat a queen's dirty old muff. That's what, that's what Elton then... John had to do, right? <laughs> Um, he didn't have any type of maps or anything for out there. They knew kind of how to get there. They knew enough about over there, but they really wanted to just send his first trip was just a fact finding mission. It wasn't like, let's bring a shit ton of people. So he sent off two ships. Uh, it was called a bark. These ships are called barks. They're fully massed ships that they can go across. They're not really warships. It's a type of ship with three or more masts. That's it. And they leave in April and they eight fifteen eighty four. 1584. And they arrive in America by July 1st. So three months, everything's going good. That was a good trip across the fucking ocean. No problems at all. They get there. It's great. What I love about this story, I mean, it's just gonna, I was just thinking about it, is they, they have ship names, like all the names of the ships, like Barks. This is fun. This is the only fun thing about fucking navigating. I don't like knots. So the two ships were captained by the very captain he named captains, Philip Armadas and Arthur Barlow. I don't know why I, th- I thought those names were funnier. Yeah, Armada. <laughs> Amada. Yeah. Philip Ar- Amada. W- William Lots of Ships. <laughs> Marcus Fleet of Vessels. I, uh, I couldn't find out how many people were on these two ships. I tried my best. Uh, nothing there. But I do know that there was a guy named Simon Fernandez. He was their navigator. He was an experienced sailor. And ex-pirate that had been to the New World prior to this voyage with the Spanish. He was actually a Spanish guy who defected, became a pirate, and the he was got caught pirating, I guess. I don't know exactly what he was doing, but he was on the hangman's fucking cheat. Like he was getting had the rope around his neck, and then somebody was like, get him down, I could use him. And then he worked his way up to being like a trusted guy. And the he was the only reason they would actually make it to America to begin with. Yeehaw. Yeehaw, comrade. I don't know why I felt that was appropriate there. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> uh, it's an unethical callback. It's good. <laughs> Once in America, the expedition met some Native Americans that lived on the Roanoke Island. The Secatan, Secaton. This is going to be a rough one for me. Uh, there's a lot of uh, tribes, Native American peoples. I don't even fucking know. Can I even say tribe? Am I allowed to say tribe? Is that bad now? I don't know. I think Not after here. the last several unethicals, no matter what you say, is going to be racist. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You're this just going to have that racist three it's, minutes. And like this episode, every time you try to pronounce a, a tribe, it's just going to be that. Yeah. Starting just now, Richard, everything you say is going to be racist. Yes. Starting just now. <laughs> Let's keep the T word to a minimum moving forward tribe are you serious are you serious is that not what is that not what you call them though i would say if you if you're reading it if you're reading it from a source quote the source they get in trouble you're in the clear that's why i always quote joe rogan whenever I try that doesn't that. mean you actively look for sources that said the n-word no i i'm not <laughs> racist god damn it i hate that fucking thing it's happening to me. look the source said it it's not my fault it has nothing to do with this yeah exactly <laughs> 
I'm a goddamn racist. All right. All right. So, but there are a lot of different tribes. They're all I've got Algonquin speaking Native American tribes. There, if I get the tribe wrong in this entire thing while I'm going, there's just so many and I get confused. So maybe I got it wrong, but the, the sentiment is real. Okay. I'm telling uh, you, there's like fucking 50 of them. I'll report you to whatever Canadian agency executes people for saying bad things <laughs> yeah. about First Nations. <laughs> okay. All right. So the second in chief, his name's Win Gina or Win Gina. I'm going with Win Gina. <laughs> There's the racism bone coming out. <laughs> Win Gina <laughs> right there. There it is. How is that racist? There it is. Racist Wait, against Win Indians. Gina. You really think that's how the Native Americans said that? No. Okay. Win Wygana. Win Gina. <laughs> Wingina. I don't know what to say. I'm saying Wingina. It's happening. All right. The second <laughs> okay. in chief, Wingina, was injured recently. He was injured recently from a war they were currently waging with the neighboring Pamilco village. So his brother, Grand Ganamio, Grand G R A N G A N N I M E O, Grand Ganamio, Nemio, uh, represented the tribe at the meeting. Um, the second hand and the expedition got along great. Everything was, everyone was sharing everything. They, were, they brought them in, took their boots off, dried off all their clothes and stuff, gave them food. Thanksgiving. Yeah, the, <laughs> kind, of, uh, kind of. We're not there yet, but kind of. So they had a great trip while they were there. They met a lot of stuff. They they uh, saw some great land. They saw the Roanoke Island. They're like, this is going to be a perfect place for a port. It's like right behind the Outer Banks. Uh, I never knew this about the states, about North Carolina like that. There's like that row of fucking islands. I didn't know that's right inside of that. So it was perfect for like hiding for their privateering because that's what they wanted to do, right? It was rob a bunch of ships, Spanish ships. They would never see them coming. So when they went back to England, they're like, this is the greatest place. You know, they even brought back two indigenous people when they went back to Britain. They brought Wanchis, a Secotan guy, Secotan. And uh, the Croatan people, which is another native uh, tribe on a southern island, was called the Croatan Island. They sent a guy named Matteo, 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 I think. The Croatan were another tribe in North Carolina at the time and resided on the Croatan Islands just south of Rhode Matteo was the son of the chieftain on that island. So I don't know. Do we call that a prince? Is that a prince? Son of a I, chieftain. That feels like a leap. It's a leap. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what that means. Uh, what does the chieftain do? Is that like the mayor? Well, yeah, that's like the person who runs the tribe. Yeah. Well, king runs a kingdom. The chief would how, have like a... How, how bad did you destroy the First Nations culture and history that you don't even know that? Did Canada really go that hard? <laughs> when I was a kid, when I was a kid, we didn't learn any First Nations stuff. My kids do, but we didn't at all. Really? Zero percent. Yeah, nothing. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. Now we do. Now the kids do for sure. But that's been years of fighting for that. It's a, it's a relatively new thing. And my country is a piece of shit for doing it. I didn't know about residential school. So I was like 35. You know what I mean? Like 30. I shouldn't say 35, but I didn't know that they were doing that. Hmm. You know, I, I, anyways, my country's not as everyone says Canada is super nice. There's we've got dark past. We've got some fucked up shit going on. Well, there's there's white people there. And, and with that comes a lot of. Uh seedy and greedy and horrible things in history so so yeah anyways they took these two guys back to england i don't know what that that must have been crazy to these guys like, imagine going from like the wilds of america to like people shitting on the street like a street like it must yeah. have been nuts they went from shitting in the woods to people shitting in the street yeah. <laughs> wild this is what i'm fucking saying like it's not like it's not the same thing as like getting a colony on mars yeah. As yeah. it was then. It's just like, oh, yeah, I got to sew my own clothes here in London or do it in a cabin where the air actually smells good. Like, it's a non, you know what I mean? Like, why would you not want to do that? I find that crazy that you don't think. Uh... I think there is probably some, cult, I, but there's always culture shock. I mean, if you went over to Ukraine right now, you'd be shocked. Probably bombed. That's the truth. <laughs> but I don't, I, don't think it's the, I don't think it's the same amount as if I was going to Mars right now. Yeah, but you wouldn't yeah. meet a Martian and go into their Martian town and see all the Martian shit they had. Well, then I really don't want to fucking go if I'm not allowed to do that. Why aren't we allowed to talk to the Martians? <laughs> I, I'm more amazed if I go somewhere and there's no people than I think if I go to like another country and I'm like, wow, you guys have buildings. Holy shit. Yeah, no, for the opposite way. Absolutely. That that would have 
bit of mind fuck, but like, I just, I just don't see it as being that big of a deal to like pick up and go. Cause like for starters, yeah, maybe it feels like another planet, but if like, I'm like some lady with a husband and like four kids and I'm, I'm like 13. So I don't have that much of my life ahead of me. I'm going to want to like settle down somewhere peaceful and not the middle of fucking London. And it just seems like a no brainer to start a new life here getting on a fucking rocket that Elon Musk is somehow involved in. So, you know, it's not safe or reliable. Like there's no fucking way. <laughs> and also you for sure are signing away some kind of genetic or, or auton- autonomical rights or something. When you get on that rocket, you know, you're going to get there and he's going to be like, all right, neural links are mandatory. It, it, like it's not the same thing. You're just gone. You're basically, you're effectively dead. Like, Back then, I feel like if you really, really had to, you probably could have gotten back on the ship and gone back. Yeah, that's true. There's no, it's a one-way trip no matter what. There's no chance of going back. I, uh, That's a big one. Plus, there's nothing there. Like, it's not like here where you could just scrounge for water. You have to make sure you bring enough and you can create enough or whatever. You can melt enough. I get that. It's not yeah. exactly the same, but I, I don't, mean, like, I don't like us pigeonholing Mars as a one-way trip. That's a little fucked yeah. up. Um, duh, duh, duh. Yeah, so when they were like regaling this place, the only thing the queen really cared about was like, had the Spanish uh, claimed it yet? And they said, no. So Spanish had only owned like Florida down to this point. They didn't go much north of that. Um, so the queen was super pumped. We found a place. So she knighted fucking rally for that. Rally just sent two guys out. <laughs> She's like, you did such a good job, you know? Now you're Knight Lord and Governor of Virginia. And that's what they were calling uh, North Carolina at the time. And it was named after Queen Elizabeth because of her, I call it, I told you earlier, she's the Virgin Queen. So they call it Virginia. They ended up having Virginia there, but that's where Jamestown ended up. But this was North Carolina. She was, she was only a virgin just because nobody had to, well, you know how everybody becomes knights. So I don't have to get into yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, he knighted himself that day. Yeah. So Rally's like, let's do this. Now that I'm fucking a knight, let's gather some up. So he raised a bunch of money and he gets 600 men to go on this mission. Just this is going to be a military operation. Send 600, go get a colony started. Only about half would stick around and then he'd send the colonists afterwards. Uh, they had left with seven ships this time. The ship's names were like Tiger, Red Lion, Roebuck, Elizabeth and Dorothy. And then they had two smaller ships that didn't really have names. And they were a pinnace type ship. Pinnace. The Tiger was a Gallus. I don't know if anybody knows what that is type of ship. I'm really shocked and impressed that you skipped over pinnace like that. Without knowing, I it. let it. I he let said it, it twice. It. He said yeah. it was a penis, and then he paused. Penis. I no, nobody's gonna take that. I'll move on. <laughs> wow, <laughs> I was like I volleying just, that up. That's I some was restraint. volleying that up for someone. <laughs> I, I'm good at setting up. I don't always have to be punchline. Yeah. So yeah, penis isn't that a great name for ship? Anyways, then there's the Gallus, the Gallas. There's galleons. There was galleons. They were the bigger military ships. And the Gallus were a little bit smaller and they weren't always military. Like they used them for military purposes, but they were also good for shipping. They could carry a lot of weight. The other were called fly boats. Those were basically cargo ships. Um, no military real use. And then um, pinnaces are the little small ships. Like when you see a ship docked like out in the thing, like in a pirate movie, and then they come to like, this land with a row or whatever, row, row ship, that's what a pinnace is. Just a little baby ship. A little, little itty-bitty pinnace. Yeah, a little small. A little, the, the smallest pinnace little mini penny. out there. <laughs> Doesn't have a mast erected. This mini armada was headed by a guy named Sir Richard Grenville, who was Raleigh's cousin. The tiger was his ship, the big boy. He was armadas. Okay, I, I don't know about this part. I got it. See, this is so hard to research. Just so much. Armadus was set. Like I heard a bunch of things that he was 19 years old when this happened. That's fucking nuts. Uh, but then I looked at his age. He's not 19. He's got to be in his 20s and 30s. But I mean, still, he was our admiral. He was named Admiral of Virginia. And then Ralph Lane, who's another guy, was appointed governor of the colony. Uh, John White was 
a guy that's important later, but he was on this ship. Uh, he was the <laughs> best. All right. He raised his hand. No worries. Rick, did you learn to raise your hand one-on-one with your mom while she was teaching <laughs> you? Yeah. Hey, I already got, I already got the, pa- I already got a pass from Dingus. I'm not the whole homeschool one. It was you, <laughs> motherfucker. So. Oh no, it doesn't matter what I look like now. The precedent's been set. It was firmly established. It's uh, not me, you. The, that tactic of not getting roasted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got me. Yeah. So John White was hired as the artist and cartographer for this trip, which. I found that was an f- interesting job would be like what a, like a cameraman or something would be today. You know what I mean? To record everything that was going on, except he had to draw because it's the fucking 1500s. Is, are you describing a cartographer right now? Is that? No, he's an artist slash cartographer. He was hired okay. to be like, to like draw out shit that was over there. It was all new. Right. So he, well, not only maps, mostly cartographer- like they're calling him a cartographer then cartographer slash artist he was okay. drawing the people that were there he was drawing the huts that were over there he was taking maps of the areas he was doing all this kind of stuff cool. uh, and you can go look him up he still has a bunch of his like watercolors uh, that he brought back from there oh, super sweet. crazy like yeah it's like from the 1500s they look really good they look super interesting well maps uh, from back the map- then are were like more art than they were anything else like they're friggin gorgeous yeah his map of that area is considered one of the best uh maps of that area of that time like niceness accuracy everything like t- all one like it's displayed at the british art museum like that's how there's lots of maps out there right so why are they oh man i gotta go map? look at this map what was this dude's name john white okay i'm so excited about this map so they got the 600 people ready to go they have john white ready to take photos or draw out everything that's going on and they head out. Matteo and Juan Cheese come back. They're going after they did all their touristy things in London. Big Ben was their favorite. I'm just kidding. They didn't Let's go see Big Ben. After they their trip to England, though, Matteo and Juan Cheese had differing views on how the settlers should be treated when they get back to America. Matteo really took to the culture. He really liked learning English. And he, he, he found everyone quite charming and, and kind of fun. It was nice to be somewhere new doing something different. Juan Cheese, not so much. These guys are a problem. They're going to come here and screw up our way of life. Uh uh-uh. uh. Don't like this guy. So they all head out uh, April 8, 1585. So this is like a year after they've left the original time. Uh, not, after, not long after the voyage, the seven ships hit a severe storm, sinking one of their pinnaces and damaging the tiger. They sunk a penis. <laughs> yeah, they, it got wet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you got real uh, there it is um, <laughs> it's they separated all the ships to this this storm like scattered all the ships so they weren't together but they had a plan b that if they were to get separated they would all just head to puerto rico which was under spanish control but like only on the one side so they kind of went around the other side and like made their own little base there and then when people show up, we'll all get back together. We'll go uh, to the next thing. And the, their biggest ship, the Gallus, was, was damaged, so they needed to do repairs. So they cut a bunch of lumber and they fucking fixed it. Uh, they, they fixed it. And they also cut up down a bunch of lumber and they made a new pinnace. They, they got a bunch of wood and made a new pinnace while they were in Puerto Rico waiting for the other ships to come. They can just make a new one. Yeah, they just erected a new pinnace in less than a week. Hell yeah, that's a I, that is a quick build time for a pinnace. They are work they are working because they they really want to uh, blast off to the Americas. You know what I mean? They're just. <laughs> but, well, before you do that, you need a, a, a stern, hardy pinnace, a, a sturdy one, rigid. You got to make sure your your sailors get there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we want this se- yeah. It's full of semen. You want this pinnace full of that's... semen before you start heading out to the ocean <laughs> to get wet. But now you're rolling, man. <laughs> this is what you get for holding the bag. Do you feel better? Do you feel? Do you feel better? Is, is it all? Oh, it better not all be. It's out all yet. off the dome. It's all off the dome. I'm not even meaning to. I'm just think. I'm just saying it. Anyway, so a week later, the Elizabeth shows up. The other three ships never show up to Puerto Rico. The, the Elizabeth shows up. He's got Governor Lane. Governor Lane and Grenville fucking hated each other. 
All right. They're at each other's throat the whole time. Lane kept accusing Grenville of purposely taking too long in Puerto Rico with his little privateering side hustle. While Grenville was getting repairs done on the Tiger, he was taking, he took the Elizabeth over because he was in charge. He said, oh, thanks for getting here. Let's make more money privateering. He's like, we could go. No, we can't. We could go. So they, they argued for months. Uh, and Grenville's idea, the whole reason he wanted to go was to privateer, go out there, make pirate, make a bunch of money. Lane was devoted to the settlement. This is what he really wanted to do. So it was like kind of weirdly split into like these guys that wanted to be pirates and these guys that wanted to make, but they all worked together because they kind of had to. And Grenville, here's an example of Grenville, who this guy was. Uh, I read a story on the internet that he would chug four or five glasses of wine at the bar or whatever. And then he would, once he was done, he would like stare at you and eat the fucking glass. Just eat the glass. What a power move. Like, yeah, exactly. what the fuck do I do if I see a guy like pound back a couple of whiskeys or pound back a couple of glasses of wine and then just. Yeah, no joke. Of like blood like, would pour down his face. Yeah, I would kick him the fuck out of my bar. There's no way glasses <laughs> yeah. are like as cheap then as they are now. What do you just what do you do if you're just another patron and this dude staring you down, like eating his glass, his blood poured like maybe he had pica. But I don't know. Like, uh, I don't think be. you could do that, you know, but because if I'm also drunk, way. I'm in awe. I'm just like standing there watching this guy like eat his glass, like not knowing what the fuck to do. Yeah, I'd probably be very jealous. Like, ooh, way to show off with your actual human <laughs> teeth. You know, I'm just sitting here with these fucking wood ones in my face, <laughs> unable to barely bite into some three day old boiled chicken or whatever the fuck <laughs> we eat. <laughs> He's like, that's the secret to good teeth, eating glass. Like, yeah. fuck, I wish I would have known 20 years ago. I'm going to have to ask my dentist about that next time I see him. Hey, hey, man. Yeah. So <laughs> Gr- Granville's there making hand over fist money, doing his little privateering thing. Ralph Lane's just bitching and p- telling him, dude, we got to get there before it hits summer. We're not going to be able to plant any crops. We're going to get fucked. So he convinces Granville, like, okay, fine. It's like the last moment. If they hurry up now, they'll make it. And they get there on June 26th, which is way past planting season. Uh, <laughs> Roebuck and Dorothy are there though two of the scattered ships they're waiting there for them they already went they dropped off a couple guys to go like chop some wood and then they went up to Newfoundland and started privateering and then on the way back they were like oh you guys are here you guys made it good Lane was fucking furious with Grenville but they wanted to make it work and they had a lot of supplies that they gathered from Puerto Rico and they brought from England so they thought we'll make it through this winter as long as the supply run gets here the Tiger Grenville ship was too big to enter the sound surrounding the island. So it was forced to anchor off the Atlantic coast. Now sounds, I don't know if you guys know much about the ocean. I didn't know what this was. Uh, sounds are smaller bodies of water that connect to ocean or seas or like shallow points in the water, I guess. I didn't really understand that, but now I get it. Uh, but yeah, so the ship also, was just too big. It would have run aground. Sorry. What's up? Uh, I was just gonna say, it's also a synonym for noises. Yes, and, yes, uh, it is. <laughs> and and what you do uh, when you stick things in your penis to uh, help you ejaculate. So, in your penis to help you yep. eject semen. Yeah, um, just, I'm just gonna start adding definitions and synonyms to these things. Continue. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> thanks. Yeah. So since Roanoke's behind the Outer Banks, it's like very shallow, and yeah. So they just they like said hey park you have to park the tiger up on the fucking outer banks on the atlantic uh i know it's gonna be maybe be more a little bit more dangerous but we're just gonna build a quick harbor won't take more than two weeks you'll be good it'll be fine almost immediately after parking the tiger on the atlantic uh it gets hammered by terrible weather and most of the supplies for the colony are destroyed oh this is their food their tools whatever they needed it's mostly gone <laughs> Uh, now they're really both fucked. They, they're now Lane's even more pissed at Granville. Roanoke, since it's too short, they, they had the good idea of making a harbor there, but it's not going to work. It's too shallow for the big ships. So fuck, they have to find a new place. So they start repairing the tiger again on the shore, just cutting down trees. And they go taking a look around the surrounding areas to go find more, uh, like a better place to put the harbor, I guess. And that's when they meet the second 10 people. And based on their previous experience with these settlers, the English, their relations were pretty good. John White even got a chance to go study the, the, the tribes and he learned their ways. He started a dictionary, their language. Uh, most of this research never made it back, though, unfortunately. Um, Mantio arranged a meeting with the Gran Gamerio, that guy, the indigenous leader. 
uh, Gran Ganimio to discuss a place for the English to settle their land. So they're even willing to like, hey, if you guys are going to stay here, I've got a place for you. Then at some point, a silver cup goes missing. All right. I don't know if this was like Grenville's favorite cup or like just because it was valuable or something, but Grenville was fucking pissed. He sent Admiral Amadas to the second in village, Aqua Sankarngak, fuck, to demand the missing cup back. The second tin didn't even steal it. I don't think they were just like, we don't have it, man. We don't, it's not, a, we don't want your cup, bro. Yeah. What the fuck are they going to do? Sell it to somebody who has no idea what value it is or. Yeah. They wouldn't have even cared about the value of silver at that point. Like what the fuck they probably, and, and I'm using their terminology. They probably went um, stupid. Savage thinks the shiny object, they should take that a eh? dumb, dumb. It's like a cat. Can't resist a fast moving object. I don't want to hear that relations were good or anything. They were obviously going to take the first opportunity to persecute people with darker skin color. That is precisely what they came there to do. <laughs> like, yeah, new life and everything, but you know, it'd be really great. <laughs> we could subjugate an entire people. Oh, hey, look, an entire people to subjugate. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And when the villagers told Amada that the cup, wasn't there. Amadas did what any reasonable man uh, in his position would do. Uh, Amadas decided to burn down their entire village and all their crops, mm. scattering the occupants of the village into the dense forest. Cool. His excuse was, I don't want to make us English look weak. Uh, he didn't want the second to think they could do whatever they wanted. You know, this is their cup. You don't steal. What's this? You're going to steal. You could steal the cup. We're going to let you do that. What are you going to steal next? The tiger? You're going to sail away on our ship? No. Burn your village down. Fuck you. Oh, my God, these fucking assholes. <laughs> yeah. So they're foreign land in a foreign land with like nothing. They crashed their biggest ship and they're talking shit already. Right. The repairs took about a month and with little supplies that they had uh, and the fact that Grenville and Lane were at each other's throat, they decided on a new plan. Lane would stay there with 100 men, 100 or so colonists. This is all military men. And Grenville would head back to England, send more people and supplies. This would take... Uh, an average trip back and forth from the Atlantic was about 50 days. So be like about four months of like struggling for a hundred people. A lot le- makes more sense, right? Unfortunately for Lane, Grenville was rerouted to Newfoundland to alert fishing fleets that the Spanish were seizing English vessels. Tensions between the English and Spanish were like very high at this time. They're at a tipping point. Uh, they weren't at war yet, but they were getting there. Lane and his crew now would have to rely heavily on the Sacketon people for supplies, uh, even though they didn't even know it. So with burning the village, tensions were fucking very high. Uh, but thanks to Mantio, our buddy that had faith in the English, he, he brought, he start, he got a meeting between everyone and like cooled it down. Now that's what we're going to call it. Cooled it down. Uh, but since that happened, Lane started to get more and more paranoid. He started, he didn't like the idea on to relying on the Sacketon. He thought, they were just bullshitting. They're not being nice to us right now. They just want to surprise attack us or something. They're going to fucking get us. I know it. So he's getting that in his mind. And then this is happening at the same time. The colonists, or they're calling them planters at the time, which I find fun. So the planters, uh, when they went there, they brought small to- smallpox and the flu. Oh, good. Yeah, they, they didn't mean to. It's not like they're doing it intentionally. They just the native people never experienced that stuff before, so they didn't have the immune system for it. So they brought the disease. And when Gina, when Gina, the chief, he fell ill. And he was one of the few people that was like, no, it's not the English bringing this disease upon us. Uh, they are the ones who can save us, actually. So he asked for prayers from the English to help heal him. The, the English guys go, sure, man. They pray for him. And then he gets better. So when Gina thinks, like, See, I told you these guys were good. They just have to pray. So then what he does is he gets, uh, when Gina goes, you know what? There's two towns over. All these three towns are suffering the same affliction. Can you guys go trample through all of our villages? Probably about 40 or 50, like little villages, 40 or 50 miles worth of villages. Went to every town and prayed for them. What do you think that did? Prayer doesn't work. Yeah, I'm sure they all got better. How else would you get better if, if not for thoughts and prayers? I mean, yeah, sorry, prayers don't work. What they actually do is spread the disease even more <laughs> everywhere. That sounds like something a faithless heathen would say. 
this is what this is when the scales tipped when gina decided to but hold on hold on you know the best way to pray for somebody to like really get the prayers into them is to like lick your hands and put them on the side of their face and then just like get real close oh and man speak, speak your pr- prayers into their nostrils and mouth <laughs> that's how you you really get the prayers into them i i always thought that kissing a rattlesnake is what made your prayers more powerful that you had to like do all that rattlesnake shit before your prayers really could like impact yeah you lick your hands grab a rattlesnake by the face and give it a kiss it's all connected it's all the same that track yeah the when gina is pissed now he's like i thought they were good now i know they're bad they're fucking whatever he thought at the time get off my island and he changes his name to parse parmisipan and it just translates to he who watches or the one who watches. I find that funny. It's like he gets pissed and he's just like changing my, my battle names out now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I was peace, peace, Wengina, battle, pe- pe- maybe, maybe that was the inception of the watcher. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, for sure. Par- yeah. Parmisipan has been the watcher the whole time. So then they just stop communications. The second 10, they stop giving uh food to the colonists and, and the second 10 actually were planning an attack to force them out of their land. Lane, unfortunately, captured a couple uh, tribes people in a different battle, and he heard about the plan before they could actually get go through with it. So Lane does like this thing where he gets, he knows he's being set up to be attacked, so he sets up his own attack crew, and then when they go to do the meeting, Lo- Lane shows up, and they fucking just kill all the guys that are there. They're like, I know you're trying to attack us, assholes. And uh, when Gina gets hit, he runs to the bush. He's like, I got to get out. But Lane's guys got him, killed him. Or I guess his name is or whatever the fuck he called himself now. Uh, they get him, they cut off his head, and they put it on a pike outside oh. the colony. Okay. Yeah. Well, that seems like a terrible way of wasting your prayers. <laughs> you wasted all your good prayers on a beheading, you son bitch. <laughs> yeah. You pray uh, for the guy just to cut his fucking head off. I mean, think about how much more they could have gotten for those prayers. <laughs> Yeah, you could have prayed for like a white person. Think about how that was right. Have exactly, having to kill someone. Yeah. Oh man, <laughs> Richard. I'm being fucking a character. It's not me. I'm talking about Lane. Uh, My God. <laughs> this is all happening over like the eight, an eight month period. The Granville hasn't sent any supplies back. They're like getting more and more panicky. So it, it, tensions were high, and his head got on a pike. Uh, they're still expecting the fucking resupply. It's June. Uh, Lane's like, we're dead soon. You know, he's ready. And so by mid-June, he looks on the, the horizon in the distance and he sees a bunch of ships and he thinks, now we're fucked for sure dead. The Spanish are finally here to come kill us. Come on in, Spanish. We're done. Luckily for Lane, it was an English fleet led by Sir Francis Drake that had been raiding Spanish ships for a good time off the coast. Drake sees the colonists, makes contact, and agrees to help Lane find a better location for the colony. So they weren't even ready to give up yet. They just needed a better spot. And after a particularly rough hurricane, that very night when they got there, uh, one of Drake's ships is swept out in the sea. Lane says, fuck this noise. I'm out. Packs everyone up. And they all head back to England. Toai, another indigenous guy, Toai and Mantio actually jump on board too, and they go back to the new, uh, to the old world, to the English. That seems England. like such a strange move. Like, what, hey, these guys came move? in here and got us all super fucking sick, and then cut our one main dude's head off. So we should just go and see what they're all about. Like, it seemed worth getting to know them. Mantio and Toai are from like the Kurotoan Island. They're on an island themselves. So they know about all the shit that's going on, but they weren't really affected. They were on. Oh, that doesn't affect me. <laughs> I can be friends with these <laughs> they were on Roanoke Island and these guys were still being nice. Like Mantio doesn't really know what they're doing. He's like, they attacked us. I don't know why. You know what I mean? Like, obviously they're the bad guy, but Mantio is such a nice fucking dude. He's just like, oh man, I don't know. I'll talk to them when we get back. You know, I'll talk. I got your back. I'll talk to them for you, man. Yeah, so Toai yeah. and Mantio go back. Three colonists actually stayed back at this point, and they were never seen again or heard of. Um, a couple days after Drake took Lane and the rest of them uh, back to England, a single supply, supply ship by Sir Raleigh himself arrives at the Outer Banks looking for Lane and Colony. Uh, one week later, they were nowhere to be found, so the ship fucked off. 
Yeah. They, he had a year worth of supplies and over 400 men. So they would have been good. Granville is pissed because he actually came to. He does an extensive search of the island to figure out what the fuck happened. Uh, it says it was very vague on exactly how this happened. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe I just wasn't reading enough. But it says they interrogated three second in and they eventually told Grenville of the evacuation. So I don't fucking know what interrogated meant. I'm sure it wasn't good. This guy ate glass. You know what I mean? Like for fun. Uh, yeah. Um, that <laughs> inter- <laughs> like they could have just asked him a question just immediately. It was like, all right, I got to hold down one of these natives. <laughs> oh my god! I'm gonna look one of these natives dead in the eye, chug my wine, bite the glass, and they'll tell me what the yeah. fuck I need to know. Yeah, exactly. That was how he interrogated people. Yeah. Just, he had a bunch of glasses. That's how he started. Just... He started by hurting himself, <laughs> and they were just and then like, was like, "If you don't tell me what I need to know, I'm gonna hurt you." I don't know what he's eating, so I don't understand the significance of this. <laughs> But I am terrified. Yeah, the resupply returns to England, leaving 15 men, uh, 15 man detachment on the island to protect Raleigh's claim in America. As soon as Grenville and fleet left, the second ten attacks the leftover detachment. No shit. Um, they kill two right away in the original fighting. Uh, and nine others run away to, to say, fuck this. They still had a pinnace there, so they're going to go jump in their pinnace and get the fuck out of there. Cool. Uh, they jump in, the nine guys. Two guys are already dead. They run away, they get in their pinnace, and they see uh, the other, the leftovers, whoever's left, they're all, like, fishing for oysters. They say, get the fuck in, the second ten are coming. And they uh, leave, and they go to Puerto Rico, they head towards Puerto Rico, never to be seen again. Lost to history. So who knows if they even made it, who knows if their pinnace got dunked, or whatever, I don't know. I hope their pinnace made it. <laughs> I hope their pinnace made it, too. Now, on the way back to England, Grant, uh, Grenville captured a Spanish ship full of gold, and with these riches, he returned to London. Queen England considered the expedition a success. Not only did what he just pu- plundered on the way back pay for the entire expedition, it actually had a lot of profit. Uh, so <laughs> she was, good, way to go. You didn't fuck that up at all. Everyone was really good. Rally, go for another try. And he didn't really want to. He's like, I don't know, man. I lost a lot last time. Uh, but John White, our artist, you know what? We got to send one more, man. I'll, I'll fucking leave this. I got this. Me and my pencils and my slate. We're going to figure this shit out. Cool. Rallies down. John White's like, let's do this. Uh, but they sit down and they look at White's maps and they say, you know what? That island's terrible. How about we go to Chesapeake Bay, which is to the south, and we'll go make a harbor down there. And it's a big or wide open spot. Nobody's going to get hurt over there. And you can make the colony there. Rally approves their mission to make the first found the city of rally and i only wrote this in because they spelled city c-i-t-t-i-e in old english which kind of reminds me of titties so it makes me happy <laughs> well it reminded them too and it's a long 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 trip on that penis so needed something to remind them of it yeah or honestly maybe it was just a typo of when he was writing it and on the map he was just like oh fuck i can't stop thinking about titties so <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Like Freudian slip. Yeah. Yeah. So this is where we started. We got we're back where we started. January 7th, 1587. The ship set sail once again to colonize New World. The three ships led this time by John White himself. Uh, now he can add explorer to his fucking artist, explorer, whatever resume. He probably has a long one by the end. White was the captain of the fleet and his ship was named the Lion. The other two ships were flyboats uh, and they had a fully rigged pinnace this time. Fully rigged. Yeah, I don't. I'm not sure what the names of those ships were, but but the two other captains were Edward Spicer and Edward Stafford. Where I'm going to call them the two Eddies from now on. Uh, and they also had 150 men and women, even children, along for the ride. So when I said 115 earlier, the two Eddies are the captains. So that's 117 plus uh, White himself. That's 118 plus Mantio and Toei come back. So it's 120 they go back with. Um, his white's pregnant daughter, Eleanor, and his son-in-law, Ana de Estere, were part of the expedition. Simon Fernandez came along as navigator again. Uh, this time it was, uh, like I said, it was all settlers this time. There was no military people, which I find fucking crazy. They just pissed off the entire area, lobbing heads off and shit. They're like, you know what? This time, let's not bring any fucking military. Cool. Hell yeah, brother. It's that colonial confidence. 
It's like we're destined for this. For sure. This is our destiny. Mm -hmm. John White's fleet of three arrived on the island off the coast of what is now North Carolina on July 22nd. They they were at Roanoke Island because our uh they're at Roanoke Island because they wanted to go meet up with the 15 of men's uh, lanes men that he left behind. So they all pack up their shit and they get on uh, the pinnace, head over to where he was. And then they come back. So they're like, okay, we can't find these 15 guys. Let's go. Let's get out of here. And Simon Fernandez doesn't let them back on the ship. He's like, fuck you. You're staying here. I don't understand why there is some theories as to why. Uh, this is what it says in the history books. Like he said, no way you guys are colonizing here. Uh, but there's two pregnant women on the ship and they were both very close to giving birth. So there's a theory that the women were like, we got to stop. We're not moving anymore. We're done. We have to stay here because our mm. kids could come any single day now and we're not doing it on the, sh- on the boat. It's, ha- it's not happening on the boat. So to save face in history, they wrote like Simon Fernandez told us we weren't allowed on instead of like allowing it to be a woman's choice that they stayed. Like that's one of the theories I saw. Wow. The woman wouldn't have been able to order them around. You know what I mean? So they didn't want to say that, which I kind of lean towards. You never know that. Like, I don't understand any other reason Simon Fernandez would be like, get the fuck. Like they saved him from dying. He came to America twice already with them. He doesn't have. The, the ship stays. It's not like the ship leaves. Simon just stays right. out in the ship and he goes, no, not, well, not allowed on. It's also feasible Doesn't that he could tell pregnant women what to do, considering they, they were also probably children back then. So oh. <laughs> we're going to keep the kids with the kids in them on the ship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I don't know, because like I said, John White's. John White's daughter was one of the pregnant ones. So it could have been just John White saying my daughter needs to stop. And they didn't want to be like the women are controlling the ship. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, I mean, but it tracks that she's probably a child, too, because he was probably, what, 24, about to be a grandfather. So <laughs> he was born in uh, 15, uh, 50. So he was probably in his 40s. He was just 40, I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're right. That's young to be a grandpa, <laughs> for sure. That's old to be a grandpa back then. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, they were forced to call uh, colonate Roanoke now. This is not what they wanted to do, but this is what they had to do. Almost immediately, uh, while on the island, a colonist is killed while crab fishing by local tribesmen. So, not safe. Uh, everyone was terrified right away, obviously. Was it a member of the crab people tribe? No, this was actually, I forget what his name was, but he was the, the John White of this trip. He was the artist. So, he was out crab fishing, and he got fucking killed right away. Damn. Damn. Yeah. Uh, White organizes an effort to reestablish communication with the Secatan, particularly the Croatoan people, Mantio's people. Uh, Mantio was with them, so Mantio wanted to go back. The Croatoan immediately tell White it was the Manchis, that it was Manchis that attacked the 15 colonists. And that's why Manchis was one of the first guys that went to America with Mantio right so it was him who was like let's kill these fucks so you can see how different size of these it's like a yin to fucking mantio's yang this guy as retaliation white organizes attack on the wanchis's tribe later in august so they're only there for about a month now uh wanchis and his boys were already long gone because killing crab boy uh they thought there was going to be retaliation and white strike, they end up striking at night. And what they do is they attack the Croton fucking looters. They attack Mantillo's people by accident. Fucking morons. They just don't want to get along with anyone. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, no, oh, probably man. six and one, half dozen the other to them. Less is less. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then Mantio, after all this, the nice guy that Mantio is, he prevents all of the, the giant war between us. He's, he tries to get peace with these guys. And white thank god white you know what white does he goes thank you mantio you're the best you know you made us feel safe around here i'm doing it i'm baptizing you and i'm gonna give you the name lord lord of roanoke and the Croatoan. thanks oh wow that's the <laughs> best honor that any native person could ever ask for is to have another person's wacky made-up belief system forced upon them <laughs> yeah, so he's just your lord of roanoke i'm the white guy that's awesome you want to know something else though i bet mantio stole that cup 
<laughs> You're probably right. That's why it was so nice. It was yeah. them. <laughs> yeah. It like just starts like getting cold sweats so as soon as they're like cutting heads off over the silver cup. He's like, ah, uh. he doesn't even have it. He just like drank some water out of it and accidentally dropped it in the river. Yeah. And it's one of those things where they didn't want to tell on his boy, but everybody knew it was Mantillo. That's why he had to go back to England with them. He's like, they're going to kill me if I stay. Yeah. <laughs> I can't be found out. Yeah. So yeah, he ended up being, he's, he's credited as being the first native American baptized and given title in the new world. I wrote thanks white people, I guess in here. And then uh, nine days later after this, uh, title was given on august 18th 1587 eleanor white dare gives birth she was named virginia and she was the first christian english born on, in the new world even though not many records of virginia dare exist and all that we know basically is that she was born her image over the past 400 years has been co-opted by many special interest groups in america uh, up to this day she's been used as a symbol of hope an adventure and mystery in North America. I've seen her being used in like supernatural things. You know, she's in like Lost Colony of Roanoke movies or whatever the fuck there is. She's all, all over the place for that. In 1901, they had like a poem about her disappearance. Uh, she was beloved by, she grew up, changed her name to like a native name. Uh, she was beloved by two, beloved by two men and the tribe where she lived and the jealous one turned into a super turned her into a supernatural doe like a deer and then one other guy tries to kill the deer anyways my point is it's all over the place for a long time she's romance you know uh but her name has also been co-opted in the name of white supremacy her name been synonymous with the european pureness in america all right uh in the 1920s a group in Raleigh, North Carolina, opposed to the suffrage movement, fearing that black women would earn the right to vote. So they urged that all North Carolina remain white in the name of Virginia Dare. They were like, I Virginia fucking dare you to try. <laughs> <laughs> she is now an inspiration for the V Dare website, which is a very alt right nationalistic. Uh, associated with the KKK website. Here was the headline at the top of the article when I clicked on the website. Uh, five New Jersey cities, 10% population had 62% of shootings. New Jersey would have virtually no gun violence if it had no black population. Yikes. <sighs> yeah, yeah. That's right. yeah, so this chick's been co-opted by the KKK. Yeah. How awful. <laughs> Well, and I don't trust their statistics because they're not very bright people, which isn't a hot take. But <laughs> I did hear something uh, recently which uh, tickled me uh, just beyond all belief. Um, the guy who got arrested for that uh, trucking convoy out in uh, your guys' uh, yeah. neck of the woods there, Richard. Um, yeah. He, uh, he was quoted as saying to the judge, uh, I didn't think I was doing anything wrong. I thought it was a part of my first amendment, right? And the judge yeah. said, uh, first amendment, what's that? Cause Canada don't have that. And he goes, I don't know. I don't know politics. I don't know. Yeah. My immediate response would have been, Oh fuck. I'm at the wrong house. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh no, I'm in the wrong place. Oh, no. yeah. Yeah, he got in the judge's oh, head. Oh no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, I thought you were my neighbor. Can I leave? <laughs> <laughs> oh, goddamn. Anyways, I just thought that was interesting that this chick who basically has seven days of real somebody actually seeing her ever has been co-opted by the fucking ter most terrible people over the years. Um, anyways, back and to I the story. truly um, believe the average reader, though, would have no fucking clue who that is. So Virginia Dare? Not anymore. Yeah. No, for sure. Yeah. No. But it's so sad that, like you said, all we, we really have is seven days of her life and she's been turned into like a. Yes, yeah, the idea of her, right? The yeah. idea of like brand new starts. and it, it, It's sad that that's how, because that could have went to anything, right? Like I said, intrigue, mystery. But no, it nowadays it's just the fucking racists. Good. Thank God. Right. It would kind of be yes. like if, if everybody took uh, all of Richard's horrible, nasty, racist remarks and misconstrued them as jokes. And he went down as a progressive icon. It would be like this sort of <laughs> twist of irony. 
you know he'd be a celebrated <laughs> woke hero he'd be spinning in his grave like no i meant everything i said <laughs> All oh, right, you fucks. Uh, surrounded by enemies, abandoned by Fernandez, and this trip wasn't turning out too good. White decides, and John White's his name. I'm not fucking back. At, we're not in racist town anymore. Uh, <laughs> John White decides uh, to send some colonists back to England to explain the situation and get a supply run sent back as soon as possible. Colonists convince White that if uh, that it should be him to go back because he had good relations, with, like he was friends with Rally, and he was more likely to get rally to agree to sending a quicker turnaround on these supplies he didn't want to go he didn't want to be the guy to go but i mean he's he, they were right like he was going to be the guy to do it and he definitely needed to go back anyway because they wouldn't have known they were dropped off at roanoke island they would have thought they were in chesapeake bay so he had to make sure rally would even know so they wouldn't miss it anyway but he left on august 27th 1587 so she was born on the 18th and he left on the 27th. So he had nine days with his granddaughter before he fucked off. He left 115 yeah. people, 87 men, 17 women, and 11 children to fend for themselves for what he thought would be a terrible month or two while he gathered supplies and people needed to make this trip a success. White had a terrible trip back, uh, full of scurvy, death, bad weather. Uh, but uh, White eventually made it back to the homeland by November that's like a long time. It took him way longer to get back. Six months, I think. Mm -hmm. By this time, war had broken out with England and Spain, and the Spanish Armada was heading to England for an invasion. It was fucking huge at the time. And, uh, England needed all the help it could get, so all ships were sequestered and utilized in the war effort. Over the next three years, John White sat at home like, I wish I could go back and see my family, but I got fucked. Uh, and eventually, by 1590, March 1590, Things cooled off enough in England that White could organize another trip to Virginia. White had two ships, the Hopewell and the Moonlight, and they were to accompany a fleet of ships to the Americas, helping loot and privateer along the way. The trip was uh, long this time around, as they had many sea battles and, of course, shitty weather. The only time they had good weather during this entire thing was that first fucking trip. The entire other time, they got fucked by weather. They went up and down uh, the coast along the Caribbean islands, all the way up, stealing as they went. Uh, they were with, I think, uh, five other ships. Uh, they got to the Roanoke Island early August 1590, and they saw plumes of smoke around the southern part of the island. They go to that side. They couldn't really have any, they didn't see any evidence of anyone. Now, they didn't really, I tried to figure out if that was like a man-made like smoke signals or some shit, but they never really go into why they saw the smoke plumes, but they did. And then they landed on Roanoke Island August 18th. 1590, Virginia Dare's third birthday. Uh, they found footsteps on the beach, but they were never approached by anyone. A little, a little further up, closer to the uh, where the settlement would have been, uh, they found the letters C-R-O carved into a tree. They thought this was interesting, and they reached the site of the colony. They found it dismantled, taken apart, not burned to the ground, dismantled, uh, not ruins, just gone. And upon further uh, investigation, they found a fence post. And on the fence post, they found the word Croatoan carved into it. Apparently, before John White left, he had given the colonists instruction to carve the location where they're going to be heading if there was any need to leave. And if they were in danger, they were to carve a Maltese cross beside it. I don't know if you guys know what a Maltese cross is, but it kind of looks like four arrowheads pointing towards the middle like that cross like little oh, triangle okay. cross you know what i mean yeah there wasn't that it was just croton so it depends on what it's crossed with but otherwise it has very long hair uh it's a small <laughs> type of dog <laughs> but <laughs> yeah multis uh puppies are cute they are fucking cute mystified white and his crew return to the hopewell the plan was to go check the Croatoan Island the next day because that makes sense. They're going to write fucking Croatoan on the pen's post. That's where they went. The island. Uh, we'll talk about that after. Uh, Hopewell's anchors. He had four anchors on his ship, uh, on their ship, the, the Hopewell. They had snapped three of them. They only had one anchor. Uh, the captains of the Hopewell in the moonlight didn't want to go check out Croatoan because one anchor is apparently just asked for shipwrecks. I, I guess the ship whips around in the ocean and just going to smash them up. Uh, and then another fucking bad weather system comes in. 
And White's not in charge of this one either. He's he's just there as kind of like a, going to check everything out. He's the, he's not the captains of these ships. So he has no choice. And the fucking two ship captains are like, nope, we're not going to check. Not worth it. I don't want to die. We're going home. Or we're going to continue along our voyage. So they left. They never checked the Croatone Island. And the 115 colonists were never seen again. They've been lost to history as well. Um, what happened to these colonists is basically what the mystery is today. It's the oldest, probably the oldest um, mystery in what would become America, unless there's some sort of Native American one that I'm not aware of, but this is considered the oldest in America. Thoughts before I go into theories. Yeah, I would say the most likely is that they were killed by natives. And I want to defend the natives and say that the only reason that they did it was um, I'm guessing that Vikings were there very early on because we know that Vikings were in North America and the earliest settlers of Canada. So I'm guessing that they just did a preemptive strike. Um, and as we're talking about Ukraine, I think I'm all for it. <laughs> okay. That's a fair, that's a fair assessment. We'll, we'll get into that. That is a possibility. It's one of the, the theories for sure. Um, I never really threw Vikings into it. I just, I don't think they need that kind of history. They just had a fucking guy come there and kill their chief and put his head on a pike. I think you need, enough. you need something. People don't just, I, I don't, people aren't just brutal by default. If you look at like historical, like when you go and you approach um, a society for the first time and you have like an introductory period, it's not just immediate war. Um, there's usually like a. It wasn't though. They had a lot, bunch of nice times. They had a bunch of nice times with these guys until they started fucking accusing them of stealing a cup. No, I think I don't think it was the same. I, I I think there was many different groups, and I think it was just the wrong group got the wrong idea about <laughs> white people or the right idea about white people. To be honest, <laughs> sure. yeah, I'll rip off one and then see if you guys got more comments. So one of the theories is that they did actually go to the Croatoan Island down south. It's the thing that makes the most sense. They carved that in the tree. They took the time to write it, you know? Uh, and first of all, John White, the fucking, uh, the, the danger plan of like carving something into a tree is a terrible idea. Uh, that takes forever. Like, you know, what if you just didn't have time to put the Maltese cross or you die? You know what I mean? Just anything more than just Croatoan. Anyways, so maybe they did go to the island and maybe there wasn't any, ev- there's been never been any evidence that any European settlers have stayed there. There's been a little bit, a few things on the Croatoan Island. Like there's been some stuff over excavations over the years, but not enough to justify an entire like 115 people. Uh, but there's been 400 years worth of erosion on these islands. And apparently like a new island popped up in the Outer Banks like three years ago. I didn't know that islands are like a mile long island. So like, shit changes a lot especially on the ocean I, i'm a i'm an inlander mainlander so i don't know anything about coastal shit especially around islands like that i learned a lot uh so a lot apparently half mile has been eroded into the ocean since those times which is a lot of time maybe it's just all underwater maybe they made it there they had their settlement it was too close to water now it's just gone we'll never ever be able to excavate or find it it's just underwater disappeared mm. um like i said they found some tools Europeans would have used her in that time period, but it could be stuff that was there because the the Europeans and stuff were there for the next, from then on. So it could have been stuff from 50 years later. It's not that accurate with like pottery or just random shit. It could have been there already. Like they could have left it there 50 years later. It doesn't have to be when they were there. What were the tools like combs made out of Indian teeth? (laughs) No, they had, they had, like I said, they had some pottery. All right. They found some egglets. You know what an egglet is? You know that little thing on the end of your shoelace? That little plastic thing? Oh, yeah. But they had big brass ones that would go on the end of like wool or whatever they had. But they're hard to date because, uh, yeah, basically, like I'm I'm doing this, but I mean, it's small. It's wool. You know, it just goes on the end of the wall, so it doesn't fray. Nah, I bet their shoelaces were huge. They found some like stupid. Uh, they found a brass ring that originally was called gold, and it had like it was obviously from England in that time period. But if it was gold, everyone was super pumped. And then they looked at it like this is just brass. But a brass ring could have been anything that could have been passed down, traded anything. A gold ring would have been a different story. Uh, they also found a, the a hilt of a scimitar, um, which is not like a big ass broadsword it's like the smaller pirate swords you I, see i like know what it is i've played skyrim <laughs> okay it's more for the listener like we're not all nerds you know i am i know what that was before that too just, it's like saying you've um, seen fight club 
Get the fuck out of here, no. nerd. That's so mainstream. It's crazy. Oh, okay. Sorry, well, you're this fight club you talking fucking, of? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry you're 42 and missed the boat on video games being mainstream media. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. They found uh, some some guns, some like muskets or muskets, uh, little baby revolve, like old school revolvers with musket pellets. They found some stuff, but I mean, all that stuff was in a uh, native garbage burial site. Like it wasn't like an English garbage burial. It could have just been traded to them over the years or looted off of things that they found. Like it doesn't, it wasn't enough to suggest full blown colony here, but there was contact for sure. So in short to my comb question, that was a no. Got it. <laughs> Part of this theory is that they didn't start a new colony or whatever. They didn't, uh, go to the south and start a colony they just got assimilated by the croatoan people so croatoan island is where mantio and his people were from right he would be the guy to try and save these colonists everybody else would try and fucking kill him for sure uh so john lawson who worked as a surveyor in that area in the late 1600s early 1700s reported that he'd met uh, the Croton people and some of them had light hair and gray eyes. Now that's not like a genetic trait of the native uh, American people. That's a genetic trait of Europeans, blue eyes, light skin, light hair. Um, racist. Yeah. My DNA telling, is racist. Uh, you're telling Indian people they can't have something that's racist. Well, I was just about to, I was just about to say that doesn't necessarily mean that they were interbreeding with the European people. What this could mean in native uh, American a genetic pool has the higher chance of albinism than most others. So they could have just found some albino native people as well. Mm, just like a racist to backpedal. But how old were the, <laughs> how old were the people that they saw? I feel like he, they weren't going that long. This is a hundred years later. Oh, 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 okay. Okay. I thought yeah. you were saying like, Never mind. No, no, this, you, this, you. yeah, this one here, this guy saw them. Yeah, but ago. I mean, there's white people everywhere, you know? Not back then. Are you nuts? Yeah, white people be shopping. <laughs> <laughs> you imagine they what get are you talking there? about? You know that. <laughs> they show up in the new world and then it's like Wingina and Minotaur yeah. or whatever, yeah. and then just Bill. <laughs> like, hey, <laughs> so I'm the one white guy. We're always. Here. I have no satisfactory backing on this, but I've been trying to find if John White had life insurance on his family and I could not, <laughs> I could not find anything, <laughs> but you know why he, he just didn't want to look for me. He was like, Oh yeah, we exhausted every possible explanation. There was nothing on the tree. Yeah, it, it could be, man. History's written by the fucking rich people. So, um, he could have just been like, I looked a lot. He probably could have potentially not even gone in 1890. Who knows? Yeah. Also this, oh, I really want to go back and see them. He was definitely fucking someone else back there. 100%. Well, yeah. Did he get knighted? <laughs> yeah. Because I was mean, that, by that point. was he? Yeah. Uh, well, that'll change somebody. When she, yeah. That will. That'll eat the queen's trauma. Pussy. Plus, if you think about it, it was definitely bathed versus unbathed pussy, right? Because no, it was most <laughs> certainly unbathed. Yeah. Doesn't well, matter I mean, where no, you are. I mean, across the spectrum of the 1500s, all pussies one. were unbathed. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> I That's promise. why they made you a knight for eating the queen's pussy. It's a very brave task to undertake. It's just caked in that stupid powder Dude, they put on their faces and wigs. By this, I love it. I no, I I feel like queens have to bathe more than. People who get sent off to the new world. They're either dirty or they're dipping themselves in blood. That's all I know about their history. So <laughs> it's, there's no bathing going on. I, I know it. The light hair, gray eye thing isn't the only thing <laughs> that John Lawson uh, saw. He actually went to their, when he went there, they gave him chickens. And chickens aren't native to North America. So where the fuck did they get these chickens? Was this from the colony? Um, some Croatoan people even had last names like Europeans, same last names as people that were on the uh, expedition to this day, even. But is that like a Ron Swanson thing? Whoever kills me gets to keep my riches and my name, you know, could be. But the modern day Lumbee people said that they're descendants of the Croatoan uh, people and the white colonists from the expedition as well they in their oral history there is parts that say that they came from 
that actual expedition. Um, so with the last names, the weird chicken thing, and their oral history saying that, it could be this thing where these people went down there, uh, lived amongst the people, and kind of interbreed and made this kind of like third. I believe I believe it, Richard. I think, especially if their last names were like it was like Tyler, English mixed with Indian person, men. Yeah, I think that. This I mean, I have most- an explanation for the chickens. I okay. Do do <laughs> <you> tell Rich. <laughs> well, Birds aren't real. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. They didn't have chicken. England started no chicken. off early and then we didn't take it. So we threw all of the tea and the birds into the harbor. And then slowly we let real birds come back. And then Ronald Reagan, you guys know the history. I don't want to. Yeah. The Lumbee Nation uh, would be like a third distinct, like the Croatoans would be a third mixture of both the indigenous and the white people. Uh, but the Lummi Nation just recently had been given recognition by the U.S. federal government as a real tribe within the U.S., uh, given the same provisions as any other federally recognized tribes. Biden said he was going to support them if he became president and give them their, their, their recognition as the real tribe. So Donald Trump went there and did support them before the election. He said, you know what? Fuck you, Biden. I'm going to give them the recognition now before you can, you fuck. That is the best part about him was how petty he was. <laughs> I mean, and it's spiked, okay, it's, but the, it's kind of good area. that it did because yeah. Biden probably would have forgot. <laughs> yeah. So, that's, that's, well, right. I, I, fully, I fully expected that to end with, and he hasn't done that yet. So, yeah. So, either I. way, I mean, it was a nice little twist, but now in 2012, there were some guys, some people that decided maybe we should test the DNA of the Lumby people and see how much European they have in their genes. Um, maybe that'll give us an indication of that was. Uh, and apparently, I don't really understand the whole fucking DNA thing. Yes and no and no and yes. Apparently, there's enough European to make this compelling. Uh, it proves absolutely but, like, there's nobody, nothing, though. There, like, that's what I'm going to say. There's There's yeah. been Europeans here for so long that it's hard to figure out. You'd have to have someone's blood from who was on the, or a family member of someone who was on that expedition for you to even compare it to. Um, but it's, it's, they say it's compelling. I don't know, maybe. Sounds compelling. The whole, I'm not a fucking uh, DNA scientist. I wish I was. That'd be cool, but I'm not. So it's all. You should do that. That would make us so much more credible. Yeah, you do it. Well, it's the internet. You can also just say you are. And regardless. That's true. I am a DNA specialist. I forgot. I am a DNA specialist. Yeah. I don't know. Along with a private detective who's going to solve this thing after 430 some odd years. Yeah. Exactly. Um, we should probably start by taking all of our own blood and checking it. I'm not because giving you my blood. That sounds like a setup. To, to what? Make sure that we're white? Wait, I think we know that. Yeah. <laughs> no, maybe well, it's reversed. It's reversed. <laughs> we're doing we're doing it in the reverse. Uh, I can see my veins through the bottom of my arm. I think I'm good. <laughs> I think yeah, I know I'm white. Yeah, that's a little European. <laughs> The way that I just go white to red and don't tan yeah. <laughs> tells me that I'm very white. Yeah. That's the um, Jamestown, Jamestown colonists, uh, they were just a little bit north when they landed and they made their settlement. But they had said they had seen some uh, a blonde savage, they quote unquote savage around that area. Uh they said they saw like a kid and it was only 20 years after you figure if that was true though, like that kid would have went and said, Hey, I saw some like more white people out in the bush, mom and dad, or whoever the fuck it was. Do you think that has anything to do? Like there were, it's close enough in time where some would have. Why did they call them right? a white savage? What's the significance? In Cause savage? he was on the, probably hanging out with all the other native people, the indigenous people with like whatever, doing whatever they were doing and calling them a savage. Like he wasn't walking around in his English clothes or whatever. Who knows? I don't know why. Now that was probably an albino little <laughs> little guy. I just feel like it takes me like five plus years to fully be assimilated. You know, he, he had a he had a feather headdress, but like also one of those big collars. <laughs> it's a white savage. I was just I was just saying I I don't know if I support any of these theories that talk about them like possibly co-mingling and living and that they weren't found because i just feel like i feel like you don't assimilate that quick like you have a completely different lifestyle that you have to come from to assimilate that quickly and not be found i feel like there would be so much fight to you leave. have whatever you want it's bountiful 
you have whatever you want. It's not like where you're in London, like scraping, like you're a middle class person out there versus this. You can go out there, live in the free land, have everything you want, like move to the bush. Why not? If you're getting, hey, if you're getting four fifths of the, the queen's winnings, you're not, you're not like a peasant. These people do not get the fifth. These people were, these are the colonists. This wasn't John White. It was John White's wife and king. Well, I mean, the kid's dead, but. That, 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 well, that, they both are, but Rally gets that. Yeah, Rally uh, gets he he gets that. And you know, these guys get their fucking four hundred acres. That's what they get a four hundred <laughs> acres, but which that, is lots. But I mean, it's not that the same. also backpedals to what I was saying before because, like, you know, it's you, you have this beautiful, wide open. Uh, it's this opportunity, and back home you might have whatever you're used to, but you're also getting shit dumped out of a window onto your face every morning. So, like. The okay, but times. I just feel like it, it wouldn't be like a hundred percent success rate, right? Some people might be like, okay, I'm gonna assimilate. Other people are gonna be like, nah, I'm staying here. I'm waiting for this fucking boat to come back, and I'm going back to London. I don't. I think you're underestimating. I think I'm. I literally would think it would just take like one generation. I agree, especially All you back have then. To do, you'd have yeah. you'd have kids, and they'd be hanging out with the other kids from the, uh, and then it would be the end of it right there. You'd be like fully assimilated. You would be the only one. The people who went there. And added to the tribe would be the only ones that weren't be assimilated. Right. That's what I think. And that's what's so terrifying about the concept of colonizing Mars to me is that like if 200 people go out there and then they all fuck each other or whatever, because you know that's what's going to happen. There's not going to be any. They're going to be encouraged. Oh, fucking SpaceX key party. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> um, huh. Yeah. They, they, on there and they have kids and then like you know 50 years later there's just this whole fucking huge group of people that have like no nationality or like no like you know that are completely disconnected from earth or something if elon musk takes this fucking nuclear bomb out there or whatever the fuck you know what i mean like i wouldn't take anything for them to just completely have no ties or concern for anything that's happening at home whether that's earth or london or whatever the fuck oh for sure and it wouldn't take long. It wouldn't be hard to like, even if you had a boss, it wouldn't be hard to be like, fuck you, boss. You're on earth. You know, exactly. you just take over, do whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> Could you? All, Whoa. All working from home on Mars. Whoa. <laughs> all right. I'm going to Mars. You just sold me. I can fucking work from Mars. Fucking telecommuting. What's the time zone there? Holy shit. <laughs> Oh my god! Yeah, no, those tasks that you needed five years ago, I'm 20 years early in our time zone. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> That's the key: free labor for Elon Musk. I bet he's not even yeah. gonna go because I bet all of his fucking hair transplant follicles will fall out in low gravity. <laughs> <laughs> Piece of shit. Anyways, this is the most accepted theory by scholars as to what happened was either a combo of this like they went and they met in with the Croatoan people or a mixture of this and the next one or the next one. Like, you know what I mean? There's the next one is its own theory, but it could be a combo of either a or B on this one. The next theory is that the planters moved inland. So instead of going South to Croatoan Island, they actually went to the mainland and they thought they wrote Croatoan on the fucking post. Cause they thought they were going to Croatoan, but instead they went to the wrong direction and followed the peninsula into the peninsula inland. I know it's kind of a joke, but who the fuck knows who was left there? I don't know how many good tra uh, trackers or whatever. They probably were all good with compass and stuff, but who the fuck knows? Maybe there was a solar storm, like Rick said. Maybe they just went the wrong way. Or maybe they just decided that was the better idea. They didn't trust any of the indigenous people, and they just said, hey, we'll go take our chances over there. This was uh, a mistake. This would have been a mistake if they did do this because it was uh, hostile native territory. But there is evidence on the inland area by the peninsula that the colonists or someone of European origin was there around that time. They did find some more artifacts. Like they found some more of those egglets. They only found some egglets. They found less there anyway, but they did find some stuff. Nothing, some more pottery. It was like a specific kind of pottery that was canceled like 50 years after the thing. So they could have been some, or uh, it was off for 50 years up until then. So it would have been canceled just as they would have gotten there. So it's kind of rare that it would have canceled. been there if it Did wasn't the that time period. Sexually harassed somebody? Yes, it got canceled off Twitter. They went through his old tweets. It was terrible. Mm, yeah. Pottery. It could have just been looted off dead bodies, could have been trade, this kind of stuff. But there was also the map that John White made of Roanoke Island. 
that made this theory what it is today. Uh, it's on display at the British History Museum, like I said. And over the years, like if a map ripped back then, or if you made a mistake or something like that, you would patch the map. You would take a little piece of canvas and flop it over where the other piece was and write draw over it again, right? So some guy was looking at the thing. He said, what's under that patch? Like what's there? They looked under the patch using like a light box. So they put the, the map behind a light and they saw that there was a symbol on the westernmost edge of the water inside the peninsula. And the symbol represented a fort is what they think. So is this where the colonists ended up? And did John Wayne even know? Did he go there and he drew, the, drew it on there? And he went, oh, fuck, I don't want people to know that, that they're there. So he put a patch over top. And the reason I think he was hiding it, which I find this is kind of the funniest part of the whole thing, is he put the patch over top of the, the, the fort. It's just a little patch. But then on top, they can see that it either looked faded away. Like if you look kind of on an angle, you can see that the, the, it was drawn on the top of the patch as well. But they also think it was invisible ink, which I didn't know you could fucking do hmm. back then. Yeah, you make ink out of like lemon juice, lemon juice, piss or milk. Mm-hmm. yes okay yeah so like a pit, invisible piss ink uh, and then if you heated it up it would like thank you nicholas cage on. yeah exactly thank you nick cage that was what was on the back um, of the declaration of independence piss yeah he just pissed all <laughs> over it yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't he didn't piss all over he used his dick as a pen and just dribbled the piss out while he was writing with it um <laughs> correct a piss pen <laughs> a penis pen <laughs> yeah so they just so I can be clear, under the patch, there was the fort. Over top of the patch was an invisible ink of the exact same fort. Yeah. So someone was hiding something from someone. The thing that I thought was maybe the Spaniards, because they would have definitely known where the uh, fort was because they're at war. There was lots of spies, everything like that was going on. There would have been the native the second ten so if they ever lost the map they didn't want to know where everyone was so they could go kill them you know there's reasons to hide it it's just weird that they kept the invisible ink part i was probably for everyone back at home right here yeah so in 2019 they did the digs this is where i wrote down this part they had pottery shards uh copper aglets yeah that's that's the yeah, real thing for them aglets no that's, that's all they found that's all they found it there but it's english I don't know. People were in that area already. So the problems with this one is like people were, like Jamestown was only 20 years out. It's not that far up. They could have got the, that aglets and stuff like that. That could have been a, a place they wanted to stop. Like it doesn't necessarily mean it was hidden on the map. They just didn't end up staying there. And if they did, they'll have at least they'll have the invisible ink on it or something. Who knows? It's all speculation, right? So you can't really guess to why all that stuff was there. So maybe, or it was a combo of both of these where some people said, fuck this, we're going inland. And then the other people went, let's go down to the Croatoan Island, stay there. When John White comes back with our shit, you can meet us back inland and we can all live there. Whatever. Those are the combos where people survive. All right. So that's the, the theories of people surviving. What do you guys think about these people surviving this encounter over there? I don't see a scenario where any of them survived. I actually think what was more, most likely and the reason that We're seeing all these claims of that there was intermingling is it was probably more of like, listen, all people are shitty. Uh, The the Native Americans were put through some horrible times uh, by Europeans that came in and just the West in general, Uh, but all people are shitty. And I'm sure they did the same thing that others would have done. They got into killing and taking slaves and raping. And, you know, moreover, I'm, that's my guess as to what happened. I, I, I don't see a scenario where it's, really any of them were able i mean if they fled i don't think they lived long yeah i think it's probably it could be a combo of all three like a lot of them got killed and they they just took the kids and women you know they killed all the guys off they kept a couple people that were as slaves or whatever and then that's how the intermingling genes got there or whatever uh i don't think everyone survived either i was i was doing research to see if there was any studies specifically on um like because there's a lot of studies obviously on europeans coming in and raping native americans but i was looking for the the inverse of that um and i was just reading an interesting article that was about um native americans in seattle where they said that 94 percent of native americans interviewed native american women claimed that they had been um raped before you know and this is modern times right so it would have been like within their own system so it's i think it's pretty interesting to kind of look from that 
view of that could have i mean and it's the fucking 1600s so well yeah there's no consent wasn't invented until 1989 so yeah and not practiced till 2003 conveniently right Still. after all the birds went missing, so. <laughs> yeah so the next theory is about the indigenous killed them uh after the murder of windinga do you think they would want retribution i say yes uh, whiteness colony were already fucking getting attacked the moment they dropped onto the island. Uh, that's why he went back to England to begin with, because they weren't having an easy time. Um, I'm guessing he probably would have brought back some military people. That was probably part of his plan. The theories were, is supported by the discovery of what are now known as the Dare Stones. In 1937, Louis E. Hammond brought a 21-pound stone with markings on it to Emory University, to be looked at by the geologists there dingus the stones <laughs> markings were all written in old english uh something that in 1937 someone probably wouldn't have known how to do unless they were educated in this area and they had this kind of area of expertise so here's the transcription from the stone uh it's in it's translated into english our version of english modern english so it starts like this on one side of the stone all right there's two sides of the stone one side of the stone it just said this it said Ananias Dare in Virginia went to heaven 1591. So that was the one side. And then on the other side, and this is translated, and I'm going to say it word for word and translated. Father, soon after you go for England, we came here. Only misery and war for two years. Above half dead these two years from sickness, being 24, savage with message of ship came to us. Small space of time. They frightened of revenge and ran all away. We believe it was not you. Soon after the savages said the spirits were angry. Spirits angry, sorry. Suddenly murdered all save seven. My child and Ananias, two, slain with much misery. Buried all near four miles east this river upon small hill. Names written all there on rock. Put this there also. Savage shows this to you. We promised you give great plenty presence ewd now ewd is said to stand for eleanor white dare more stones were found after this first discovery 47 to be exact all over carolina all of the 47 that were found after this one were are ha, have been written off as hoaxes it's actually taken away the legitimacy of the first one that was found which has actually been both sides of this it's been a uh, uh, called authentic and a hoax at the same time but i think it's authentic because of the way the erosion of the lettering was it, you'd have to chemically treat it very you have to be very fucking smart at etching you have to okay you have to know how to old english first of all you'd have to know how to like treat a piece of rock so it would look like it's that old with chemicals and then you'd have to trick a bunch of geologists into believing it's true at a university. That's a lot of shit you'd have to do. You'd have to be a very smart person to get away with that. And then why only do it on one if the 47 other ones look like shit and don't even sound like fucking old English? Um, so it has been actually authenticated and also it's, it's disputed, but it has been authenticated. So I'm going to go play with that sounds as true as it gets to me. Uh, that fucking rock. Um. There, there's also possibilities that the rock, the, the dare stone was a prank from 400 years ago too. So it, it could have naturally eroded during that time because there's pranks. There's always, there's always been graffiti, which I found out there's been graffiti all the time. So people have been etching fucking bullshit into rocks. It wasn't always important. It could have always, it could have also been a, a, a piece of shit, but I, I don't know if this is guaranteed to be real. But I like that it is real. So I like this idea the most, I think, out of all of them, that they uh, probably seven or eight of them survived, lived with the rest of the tribes, and the rest of them were just fucking murdered off. There's a couple problems, though. They've never found a mass grave or anything like that. And you figure they would have. But like I said, with erosion, maybe they just went out to the ocean. Maybe a bunch of people just threw them in the ocean. Maybe they kept the bones for ornamental purposes and magic or potions or whatever the fuck they were doing 500 years ago. Who knows? But I think that's I think that's my uh, my th the one I like the most is the dare stone thoughts. There's a couple I mean, more. Theories. I double checked, but a lot of Native American death rituals involve fire. So I would guess that they would have been some form of cremated anyway. 
Mm. Yeah, they said they said there's ornamental and uh, black magic purposes to this stuff too. But I mean, I didn't go like deeply search into it. But this is my research is saying that some things potentially could. But it's 500 years ago. Shit changed so much, and records are so bad. The other ones, the another theory. You got any thoughts on that one? But I th- honestly, that's mine. That's what I think is real. We'll get into the fucked up ones in a bit. That's the one I think is real. Um, Sounds okay. Yeah. The next one is the Spanish killed the colonists. I kind of touched on this earlier. The Spanish knew where the colony would have been. I, they were they're spies in the English court all, all the time. Uh, who knows if maybe he had life insurance and hired the Spanish to go out there and kill his wife and kid. Who knows? But the Spanish were aware. They were in the area. They were getting attacked by the English as well. So it wouldn't shock me if the Spanish just marched north from Florida, trying to fucking keep the English out of their area for more uh as soon as they saw the ship leave they know there's a few guys left go kill them all i i kind of find it unlikely because why would the spanish be bragging about that you know especially in war times we killed a bunch of your guys you big bussies that's just my thoughts on that nothing for the spanish okay uh, <laughs> another th- that's fine no no love for the spaniards that's fine there's uh, another theory that they got in the one pinnace that was left and tried to sail back to england and died at sea sure i i can go why their, not their, on that one because... their penis was premature and yeah, they... <laughs> destination didn't make that's a sure like that could be it why not you know why not they all just decided to get the fuck out of there and go sure um no way to prove that no way to disprove that it explains a lot of different things why they took down everything they're bringing back all their supplies why there's no but mass grave it's all at the bottom of the ocean where the pinnace ended up it's in the ocean as well like it explains a lot deep it went deep it's just not fun so i don't like that one another one here is that they all died from some sort of disease or famine it was a biggest drought in the past 800 years um, according to records and they didn't have any crops they were there late um, they didn't have the friendship of the second people. They could have just died, all died off. Problem is there, like I said, doesn't explain where the bodies went, where the camp was, why it was taken down, all that stuff. But that's a theory that's hanging out there too. I just figured I'd be amiss not to mention mm. it. Interesting. This is perfect. Uh, I added this today because I heard Rick wanted to go early. So I added some more to it. Um, <laughs> theory eight. <laughs> uh, theory aliens. Uh, maybe they were taken by aliens just fills in the gaps of all the stuff that doesn't make sense uh they took their whole plantation they took the whole colony and they planted their colony somewhere else they're like some sort of weird zoo like human zoo the the humans wouldn't have even known the colonists would have just been on some ship with their their little uh, habitat as they would call it on the alien ship and uh just mass Pick them up all at night. Wouldn't even know the difference. They don't even know they're missing. They have an entire new America on the ship getting studied. They've never even aged. It's the same people. They're just in an alien zoo somewhere. I can't wait till you're a little older so I don't have to change a motherfucking diaper again. (laughs) (laughs) Changing diapers for 400 years. But she's forever just like 300 (laughs) years old. Like... (laughs) Forever an infant, but really 300 years old. Just never. Yeah, it, it explains it, it get, that that symbol on the map. That wasn't a fort symbol at all. That was a spaceship, bro. Makes total sense. 100% mm. sense. It's very logical. And right. it's going to keep Rick around for a little longer. Okay. <laughs> Another theory I added just now. Uh, cannibalism. I actually was partly thinking of that before, too. Yeah, but, okay, but they can't all eat each other. There'd just be one really full guy left. You can't <laughs> explain everyone's disease. Well, don't you get a lot of disease from being a cannibal? <laughs> Isn't it like no, really dangerous to eat, eat your eat own your, species? If you eat their brains, and you get them prions. Maybe they didn't know that. Technically, you did have one person left. You had EWD. Yeah, she ate everyone. To try yeah. To <laughs> It's just burping yeah. and writing the stone. <laughs> oh, they're gonna buy this. Yeah, <laughs> Jamestown, the first oh, successful English settlement that we talked about early on. They resorted to it's historical fact that they resorted to cannibalism in 1609 after a particularly long uh, winter. They had 400 settlers, and I think they whittled down to like 30 by the, the end of that winter. And they would have. Yeah, they would have (laughs) not survived had they not gotten their supply ship. Kind of like the situation that Grenville found himself in, except for 
Grenville pushed out. They could have just waited the extra two weeks and they would have probably survived. So since that happened in Jamestown, a lot of people like to move that. Like, why wouldn't fucking the dares do that? You know, why wouldn't, uh, why wouldn't the, the white colonies do that? So they just ate each other, you know, uh, no water. Like I said, it was a drought. So they had to force themselves into cannibalism. Uh, why would, where did the bones go? Crushed them down and ate them too. They're hungry. Um, they were hungry. Maybe it wasn't. Yeah, maybe it wasn't them. I'm writing as much as I can to keep Rick as long as I can. <laughs> I'm just working over <laughs> top of you. I don't know if you hear me typing, but I can give a shit if you go on for hours. I'm. I, this is what I got to do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's that's the end of the episode. I just figured I'd add some funny ones on the end okay. to piss rick off but he's not even listening so who cares <laughs> aliens is one aliens is one on the internet i wasn't gonna add it but i'm like fuck it i like aliens i think um ultimately uh my biggest problem is anything that's that long ago like i'm i'm skeptical that anything happened at all like history is so untrustworthy like oh for not, sure like i don't i'm i don't believe anything happened before 1971 like there's no fucking it's just, it's just too far gone to even fathom like i mean like sure yeah like there were people alive then today but they're old as shit and their opinion is worthless because of that so yeah but i mean the invention of the photograph is when i can start like kind of believing stuff Nah, cable television there's pictures of jfk's skull and jackie onassis is like gut like on her like i know that yeah. happened I mean, that was cool, that was... but I'm not going to say that it counts. <laughs> well, just like, for, so for starters, like, narrowing the scope of that a little bit, I guess, would probably be, but the chief dude, like, I'm looking at him right now. And, uh, and like, who who's to say he was even the chief, like, when they met him, or that, like, anything was, like, chill between anybody, for starters, but, like, that that guy was the chief. You know what I mean? Like, that just seems like... I don't trust anything from the 1500s, 1600s either. I feel like you there's a lot I mean? of truth in there, but there's a lot of, like, embellishment to make you look better, especially when you go across the ocean and go, like, I did this! Like, come on. Maybe, yeah. like, historians in England really couldn't make shit up that much, but anybody in the, going to the New World, total bullshit. I agree with that. But, I mean, Mantillo did come back. Yeah, you know, people people came back to England. That happened. I know that happened. It's all over the place. So some of this happened, and some of the guys were actually uh, they were chill, obviously, because they got in a ship, trusted to bring them back, and then they went back. They all stayed in lap luxury. They, 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 Mantio, Toai, and Wanchies when they went there, they went and stayed at fucking uh, the forty thousand acres in Ireland that Rally had. They stayed in Rally's like a state house, like getting fed grapes and shit. But that either John White was a terrible fucking artist or that man actually looked like a Simpsons character. Um, Does it bother you that John White was so accurate on the, the muscular, like mu how much muscle he had on his legs and arms, but his face um, is just completely fucking jacked up? Well, I think I, he was half the artist that people think he is. I think that was probably very accurate. And that man has a very seedy face. Like he looks like the guy who's just like, yeah, I'm the chief what of it like he just like rolled in <laughs> and had nothing to oh, do with right. any of them and he's like oh, i can broker all these deals with you you know like we can we can hang out and talk which makes sense why he like ended up sure. rolling for over sure. and getting his fucking head cut off because he was never in charge of anything he was just speaking for these poor people who were just like who are these dudes who are squatting in our backyard well that's that's the one thing i find really crazy is that they learn each other's languages so quickly Right. So they could have just been making shit up because I didn't really mention them that yeah. much. But this guy, uh, the scientist guy that came with them, I forget his fucking name, but he said he learned he made basically a dictionary, Algonquin English dictionary. Like, dude, th this was over the span of three years. There's no way you could get all the subtleties of this language that quickly. And and as their translator, they probably had Chief Vagina, who's just like, oh, yeah, he says he wants you to go over there and take that. But, you know, he wants you to be nice to me about it. Yeah. <laughs> No, for sure. I, I I do like this one because it's so far. We can make so many speculations, but we'll never. No one will ever figure out what actually happened, uh, except that for is us. Not the attitude which, I was going to say. <laughs> I was going to say, except for us, which is already solved. 
because Rick knows exactly what happened and he's going to tell our client, uh, what did you call yourself? Lourdes Dingus? I don't know. I don't think I called myself anything. <laughs> hey, Dingus, really uh, appreciate meeting you. You hired us for two hours and 15 minutes. Have a good one. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> he really didn't he is, have anything. He is actually. <laughs> <laughs> he actually had something. Oh, fuck. I loved it. I knew, I knew it. I knew that he was just going to be like, and I'm out. What a piece of shit. As if he's that mad over me asking him the solution. Okay, fine. RJ, yeah. what are we telling Dingus here? So oh, we can God damn. Collect- I was just saying you can't believe any part of history before 1971. So it sounds like we're probably going to have to go with aliens. Sounds reasonable. Well, I think we can get both this vote two out of three voting for aliens. So it's aliens. So aliens came, made a little habitat. I guess. I uh, hope you've been paying mm-hmm. attention. This is worth whatever money we charge you for this answer. Right. And it's. And. Uh, well, uh, that's what I was. Are you charging me? Because I'm not sure I'm happy with aliens being. Oh, no, you don't get to decide the truth. Who do you think you are? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. You go if you go to a store, or buy a sandwich, and go like, I don't like it. You still got to pay for it. It's not your fault. It's not my fault. You right. don't like it. Yeah, I don't. I don't like those facts. Give me different ones. What are you fucking yeah, Kellyanne exactly. Conway? <laughs> <laughs> I I liked the uh, the stone theory that you that you brought up. That was epic. That was awesome. Yeah. I, I definitely I had to go look up what the dare stone looked like and like what the fake ones looked like. And the fakes definitely look like fakes. Like the, the writing goes to the edges and everything in the original. That's not how it's framed. But he kept bringing them in though, charging 200 bucks a stone. And he would just, he just fleeced this fucking university. So if you go to Virginia or to North Carolina and talk about the stair mm-hmm. stones and, and any like, possibility that it's real you get laughed out of town it's one of those things where it's like an embarrassment to the to the whole story wow. and nobody wants to even take people have taken a closer look recently and like i said the stone is authenticated but also not like also discounted so it's super annoying but hmm. the you know authenticated it was hmm. this guy who like studies ancient uh graffiti they wanted him to go look at it yeah, oh, some guy cool. who does that. I forgot his name. I didn't write it down because I was going to get too much into it, but I, I forgot that. I, I didn't know I was bringing you on today. So I got the fucking rock doctor here. I wish I would have thought more of this. But he uh, goes around looks at, uh, and authenticates this. He's the guy that authenticated. I wonder, that it was I wonder how many ye old dicks he's flipped through in order to oh, find so anything many. substantial. So many. So many. Someone was like, oh, this looks like a, a tower dick. This yeah. one here looks like a ship, three ship. That's three dicks. Uh, he's just like crushed so many dreams saying it's dicks. I'm this sure. This is all dicks. French yeah. dick. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, on that note, thanks for solving my case, guys. But are you sure that Abigail's in jail? Have you, have you gone and seen her? Mm, that was Richard's job to visit her. That, what do you mean? It's our job. You're coming with me. Sounds like somebody slacked. I just watched Private Dicks and I think RJ's the funniest. What? Come on! Hey there, all you private dickheads. That's probably not the name we're going to stick with. Anyways, uh, RJ here. I am here to tell you thank you for listening to another episode of Private Dicks. If you liked what you heard, go on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere they take your reviews. Drop us five stars. Say something nice. Also, what you just heard was from last season. If you want current episodes as they're dropped, head on over to patreon.com and search up Unethical Podcast. That's our mother podcast. I was not aware Private Dicks was a spinoff. I'm going to renegotiate my contract. On Patreon is a full 16-episode season, more of Private Dicks, uncut videos of each episode, and many more things are getting added all the time. You can also find all of Unethical's content on there, so go listen to that. And, if you're already a patron, fuck yeah, dude. You're the best. (laughs) 